the slow side. But at least there's lots of parking. The office can be a bit on the quiet side. The accommodation's pretty rustic. But you get to meet the greatest friends of your life. So this is a typical dig, especially in the Near East where we have a group of workmen who are helping um, a set of students from Kiel University with the excavation. You can see they're using things like hand shovels and trowels because the work is quite delicate, we don't want to go through anything. So here they're actually clearing away some roof deposits from the building where it collapsed. And you can see it's an absolutely spectacular place to be working. You never know what you're going to dig up and it's just nice and calm and peaceful and but you get those moments where it's very exciting when you find that thing, that special thing, whatever it might be, some kind of amazing human burial or some amazing find and it's about setting it all in context. It's never about the one find, it's never about the one thing, it's about what it means as a whole. So on excavations often you live um, very close to the site, so for example at this site they have tents um, and they sleep here at night and they walk just over to the site which um, is, is very close and you live uh, with a team, you have to get on with everyone, everyone chips in, you make, you make food, you sleep here and you have amazing stars at night, the scenery, um, the whole sort of being outdoors and sort of roughing it a little bit, it uh, kind of adds to the excitement of the job. So I first started getting interested into archaeology when I was 11 and I visited the pyramids in Egypt and um, then I went on to do it um, as an undergraduate at university, went on to do a master's, been on many excavations and really just got into it and the field work is one of the best aspects of, of archaeology. So you get a lot of travel and you learn about different cultures and you see amazing archaeological sites all, all around the world and you really do get some amazing opportunities. No, I don't dig, I don't dig uh, holes in the ground un unless I'm using a JCB. I'm, I'm, um, I'm a geoarchaeologist, so I'm interested in how landscapes uh, have evolved through time and the interaction people have had with them through that period of time. If you do an archaeology degree, you are, you are tackling very big and complex problems. So um, in, here in, in Wadi Fainan, we're dealing with a, a, a very complex problem, which is how do people manage to survive here over 8,000 years? How did they develop the first factories? How did they run a, a massive copper mining and smelting enterprise to do that? So you have to bring together an enormous range of, of skills and tools to do that, from remote sensing uh, imagery, satellite, Im satellite imagery from space, uh, soil science, technical science in, in laboratories, uh, mathematics, statistics. So actually, um, rather than archaeology being the vehicle, the, the, you, you're developing a whole range of really key graduate skills. Today we are creating a photo log of the entire site. So that basically means we go around to each building, we photograph the whole building generally, and then if there's any specific aspects within that building that need photographing, like a particular niche or a platform or a hearth, we photograph that individually as well. The nice part about this project is that we're creating a little bit of history for everybody to use. This is a portable XRF scanning device. And what this does is it sends out X-ray beams from the front of the instrument um, into whatever we've decided we're going to be scanning. And it'll collect those X-ray beams back and let us know what elements are within um, the substance we're scanning. You don't just learn about um, past societies and cultural development, you learn other skills. So IT is quite a big component of an archaeological degree. Archaeologists come from a range of backgrounds. Geography is one of these backgrounds, an environmental background, or perhaps something like a history background and how people develop. I applied to do archaeology at university. Um, I had biology, history and geography, but only because they didn't offer archaeology where I did my A-levels but um, it's more the grades, um, depending on what university you go to, and it, and it does really range, but you don't need to have a specific background, just A-levels to go on to university, so it, people can come from an art background and do archaeology or a politics background, and I try to do subjects which might be more relevant, but it's not necessary. 
You never get to travel the world normally as a, a young person, but as an archaeologist you can come out to these different sites and experience different cultures, different environments um, and different countries and you, you get a much more broad perspective of life.